So we'll continue without break. So my name is Simon. I'm also from the R&D Center over there, actually. <laughs> and uh, my talk will be quite a lot different than Christian's talks. So this will be really technical. And I'm talking about I'm talking about tools. Uh, let me just find my focus here. I didn't. Ah. Okay, tools, tools, tools. So I'm going to talk about uh, how we integrated City Engine Tech into Houdini and into Unreal. So, and so does anybody know about Houdini in this audience? Oh, okay, so Houdini is a bit like uh, the big brother of, of City Engine. So Houdini is like a general purpose modeling tool. It's been around for 25 years. They do smoke, they do fire, they do destruction, they do, and that's the interesting part, they do also modeling these days, they do animation, they do rendering, and so it's now like a really a nice companion, like I said, the, the big brother of City Engine. You could even dare to say you could do buildings and houses as well in Houdini, but it will be a pain in the A and take a lot of time. And that's why the, the basis thesis, basically, of this whole work, which I'm going to show you, is that City Engine is very good at this narrow task of creating architecture, and Houdini is very good at the rest if you want to do a procedural workflow, basically. And then... Before I dive into the topic itself, I'm going to quickly talk about City Engine and Unreal. Just we have like a context also in, in this part. So, this is City Engine with the new um, or the updated Unreal exporter. So, I mean, you all know Unreal, it's uh, kind of the big competitor to Unity and uh, this AAA game engine. And we have a dedicated exporter in City Engine. This is uh, partially also on the initiative of Epic themselves, they have this big program to integrate other tools into into their workflows. Um, we are one of these tools and so together with Matthias uh, we have this wonderful favela project here inside Unity itself in the editor and we have this nice uh, demo. We showed at uh, GDC recently. So this is all real-time, no render. This runs uh, as it is here and uh, of course we can also do virtual virtual reality things with that and take it to the next level basically. So um, now we talked about Unreal and now I'm gonna to take a step back and actually talk about VFX. So uh, I talked about tools and this is all in the context of creating city models for uh, movies, for games. So this is not really GIS or, or urban planning, this is really for the visuals and um, you know, a typical pipeline you start on the um, left side with the inputs, you this is what they call the, the upstream pipeline. So you have tools and files and databases and also ArcGIS Online actually nowadays with the gap map data feature. Then you do your city engine, thing, uh, city engine things with the layers and the street networks and the, and the rules. And if I find the uh, perfect. Just, uh, so you have the rules here, city engine. And then you go in the downstream pipeline. Here's Houdini, here's the Autodesk products, Maya Max, some specialized layouting tools, and the game engines. So this is basically the, the context of, of what's, what's coming now. So I would like to focus now on this uh, special tandem here, or duo, City Engine and, and Houdini. So as I mentioned, City Engine has the the cool kid who can do the very narrow task of creating city <coughs> models and, and Houdini you can do all the rest and in between we have Al Alembic which is the a modern version of FBX if you want so yeah, a nice format to, to transform transport data so usually you do your street layouts, you do your buildings your CJ rules so you, all, you guys know all about that and you export that into Alembic usually and then you have to the mirror step basically in Houdini, you import it again, you um, have to translate all this Alembic um, information which City Engine exported. So think about um, CJ reports, think about generic attributes, 
all the metadata besides the geometry, and then you have to translate that into Houdini semantics, so you can actually do Houdini things afterwards. And as you saw in this little PR or sales video they did, effects, animations, smoke, fire, rendering. And now this is the, the problem, point eight. You have to start iterating, right? Because you, here you realize, oh man, I forgot a building or something like that. And so you start, you start this all, like, all over again. Export, import, <laughs> export, import. And so let's look at a, at, a, at a specific example of that. So this is a bit of a, another example or tutorial. This is, I think it's tutorial 19 from, from the City Engine tutorial suite. It's, it's a fancy flying building city. And um, we want to basically get this into Houdini and render. And so we use the exporter in City Engine. So that's what we all know. And then we are in, in Houdini. So Houdini screenshot for the first time. On the left side, seems a bit cut off. On the left side, you have the viewport with the bounding boxes because uh, loading the high res geometry exported by City Engine in, in the batch exporter is too much, so you cannot really display this in, in Houdini directly. So that's why there's some fancy Houdini tech to delay the loading of the actual geometry to the ray tracer at the very end. So if a, if a ray hits a box, only then. It, it loads, the, loads the geometry and the textures. It saves memory this way. So the next step is then dealing with these uh, attributes I mentioned. So you need to translate from Alembic back to, to Houdini so that Houdini understands the colors and the textures which should be applied on the polygons of the buildings. And that's the current way you do that. So this is also Houdini user interface. This is what we call an operator. Operator usually has inputs and outputs. This one only has an output because it just reads the Alembic file. Then the geometry wanders into this little node which has a bit of Python code behind it, which does the translation. And this node represents basically the material assignment and, and the renderer. And when everything works out, you get a nice ray trace picture like that, for example. So let's look a bit of a, a few issues this, this workflow has. So this is nice, it works, it's modern, but I want to take it a step further, basically. So um, one problem is this uh, tedious export-imports, because uh, I know how slow the Alembic exporter can be. I've written it, so um, we should uh, try to avoid it as much as possible. It's not fun to iterate. and so. We also have this translation of, of attributes, and if we want to do a level of detail, we have to export multiple times. And this makes the whole thing even come more complex if we want to do switching in the, in the Houdini scene afterwards. So what can we do better? I think we can do better in reducing the number of export imports, obviously. We can reduce dealing with all these properties, but we also want to have new stuff. So new stuff could be that, hey, Houdini has all these fancy tools. Let's say we want to derive the, we want to switch the window model of a building to its broken state based on a tsunami wave which hits the building and stuff like that. So you could do that right now with this workflow, but you would have to do the simulation, export, extract the points which hit the building by using some kind of stand-in, export it back to City Engine, with some other format going back to uh, Houdini, and this is uh, getting horrible, obviously. So. What we want to do is, obviously, you know where I'm going with that, we want to defer the actual execution of CGA into Houdini. That's the whole trick. So how do we do that? Or first, let's look at, a, at an example where this has been done already. So this is a super crazy demo. This is some kind of uh, dystopian uh, 90s style computer case graveyard with a fissure net around the building. <laughs> Just for sake of purposes, I said it's not urban planning. So, <laughs> so let's let's say analyze this uh, this example a bit just to understand. So there's some some CJ things going on. Obviously, we have these boxes um, randomly oriented and scaled and stacked on top of each other. There's some pseudo rule network. There's some parceling going on, but something the experienced CJ user sees probably semi-immediately is how did we get these fissure net structures 
around the buildings because if these are all leaf shapes of CGA, how did we do stuff on a combination of leaf shapes? This is not possible in City Engine currently without doing export and importing again. And so that's how this works. This is now Palladio in action. We have uh, create street networks, we have parcel, we have buildings, and then ah, do we do some Houdini stuff to create the, the actual wireframes or these fishing nets around, around the buildings. And so that's, that's how this uh, example came to be. I'm, I'm coming back to this. I'm now finally moving ahead to finally introducing Palladio. There's a lot of prelude here. So, yes, Prelaudio is a city engine plugin for Houdini. It uh, provides two of these nodes to Houdini. Um, I'll explain that in a second. Um, it's open source, there's everything on GitHub. You can go there, download binaries, or play with the source file. Uh, I show the details at the end. And our motivation to do this was actually first, it was we want to test the city engine SDK and we want to see how, how good and how flexible our APIs are. I mean PRT APIs. And then we found out uh, eventually after playing around with that, mm, there's some new stuff we could do. Uh, remember the, the fisher nets. And of course, the nice thing is, as mentioned many times now, we can reduce uh, export import overheads. Yeah, and at the current state, you basically need a City Engine license and a Houdini installation. And they, they are cool, they have a free apprentice inst uh, license. So you only need the city engine license at this point to do that. So let's look a bit at how this works. <coughs> at the very top level, it's super easy. Here's Houdini, here's the city engine rule package, here's the input quote, you apply Palladio and you get an output. So let's see how this works. So we have city engine with a very simple rule. We just um, extrude a, a quote, we subdivide it, and then we uh, also have this height attribute. Um, you all know that this is the super classic basic city engine use case. We have something which looks like a building maybe. And then now we export this rule into a rule package. I guess some of you know this when working with Pro or the procedural layers in, in ArcGIS. We just save it on disk. We don't need to upload that. And now we go to Houdini. I here prepare the quad as well. This is just a grid node in Houdini. So this is now this network which basically generates what you see in the viewport. I now have my first Palladio node here. And I can assign, it's a bit hard to read. Um, I assign the rule package I exported in City Engine. I put that here, it reads the, the uh, attributes. Um, it's a bit like the City Engine inspector, this part. Now I add a second node, this is now the actual generate node of the Palladio, and we have our city engine rule generated inside uh, Houdini. So now we wonder, okay, how do I drive the attributes? How do I play with the inspector, which we don't really have? This is, this is uh, done by using uh, Houdini tools. So you have Houdini tools to modify attributes on polygons, and I added, added the height polygon here, uh, sorry, the height attribute, and now you can play City Engine in, inside Houdini. So that's, uh, in a nutshell, the very fundamental um, way this works. Um, so j just to uh, reiterate a bit, so you take your Houdini geometry, you assign it with the assign node. This is also where you can, you know, if given a bunch of polygons, you can compose which polygons together are one City Engine input shape. This is also what happens here by assigning an ID. Then is the rule, the rule stuff you know from City Engine Inspector, and this node will evaluate the default attributes of a rule so that, it, that you have something to, to generate. Then optionally you can use other Houdini tools again to drive the attributes, so if you want to do a classic City Engine thing you can put the texture maps there and drive the attributes with texture sampling. That's also where you can do the wave simulation and find out which building you want to destroy, or which windows you want to destroy. And there's the second Palladio node, the generate node, which then executes the rules which are assigned to each polygon and emits reports, materials, all the things. And that's what you take to continue working 
and render eventually or do destruction. They have great destruction tools so you can destroy your buildings. So it's fun. So a, a bit of history quickly. Um, we had this idea about three years ago or four years ago at Zigraph talking to the side effects guys, the Houdini makers. And then we had our first working prototype with a bad UX. We tried to recreate the city engine inspector. That's a super bad idea because it gets really complicated and tons of widgets for each attribute and it's hard to control. And then we kind of had this uh, problem where we fixed it when we realized we just separate what you just saw, the assign and the generate. And then you can do all these Houdini things in between. And we basically avoid replicating the city engine user interface because we need to do it the Houdini way. And that's then what ended up in a, yeah, a nice little thing. And we are currently we're still exploring and learning ourselves what we actually can do with that. It's endless almost. And so let's take a critical uh, look at it. What did we gain? Um, we actually gained reducing import and exporting. Of course, if you want to do street shapes and parceling in City Engine, you still need to import that into Houdini and take it from there. Uh, but you can now do the rule attributing. You can do this all inside Houdini. This you don't have to deal with complicated Alembic or what what not formats. And um, you can also do the LOD. So you can drive the LOD um, parameter, for example, by distance to the camera of this building. And so this is really nice stuff. But you can do new things, which are not possible in in City Engine itself. You can actually well, you can paint all the attributes all over the place, but you can daisy-chain multiple rule packages. So you can actually um, apply a rule on top of another rule set, and that could be quite handy if you do complex stuff. There's no free lunch. You now have to deal with these RPKs. That's an additional complexity. And you can only do what the City Engine SDK can do, and that means there's no streets and layers. And Houdini is not really good with GIS, so you need to be, make sure a bit with your numbers and coordinate systems and origins and things like that. So coming back to this, to kind of close the loop a bit, um, so this is the f where the first rule gets executed, which creates the, the road. And this is where the second rule is created on top of that, uh, executed on top of that to create the footprints of these weird computer cases. And then here we have the actual building rule, and then this is basically Houdini combining all the geometries, putting a convex hull around it, and just put tubing along the edges. So, and the credit for this fancy demo go to Matthias. <laughs> Good stuff. And you can actually also do, with the reports, you can actually also count how many buildings you created inside here. That's, that's a, might be a neat, neat tool to do stats. Okay, so the, the roadmap for this project is basically um, do a bit of housekeeping and feature complete, completeness um, and interclusion is currently missing. But then comes the really fun stuff. It's called the Houdini Digital Assets. And this is basically you package a design in Houdini, all these nodes you saw, you package that in a file and you have basically a ready-made procedural uh, model you can share with other people. <coughs> and now if you think about, if you wrap Palladio in there and put the RPKs in there, you have a, a one-file city model you can share with other people. And then it gets even better, because there is a thing called Houdini Engine, which then reads this package and applies it in Unity, Maya, Max, Cinema 4D. So we get, a, we get City Engine or CGA rules into all these packages for, I, I won't say free, but... <laughs> it's possible now, <laughs> without getting crazy. And the best thing for us is, of course, this works in Unreal as well. So I have a little sneak peek. So here's City Engine with its uh, usual thing, right? The very old candle building, always a nice tech, good tech demo object. We just play with the height. And then we go on, as we see, as we saw, we can do that now in Houdini with Palladio. We do the same thing here. But here we created this asset package I mentioned, this, this digital asset. And we expose two uh, um, parameters, the rule package and the height of the building, which are then fed into Palladio. And now it's really nice, you can do that then in Unreal as well. And you get this 
digital asset in the scene layout or in the asset manager, it's hard to see. And you have the exact same parameters as you have in City Engine or in Houdini you have as well here. And so this, I'm, I'm still trying to learn if, how much sense it makes, but it's really cool. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I probably won't go and build a huge, a huge game layout purely with these guys because that can also be quite expensive eventually, but we'll see. It's probably some middle ground. So yeah, that's me, a crazy tech guy with a lot of tools. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is where you go, github.com, Esri Palladio, it's where we host that project. Uh, you can, if you have Houdini and, well, if you have City Engine, you probably all have, you can basically start today trying this out, and um, a shout out to the Houdini guys for helping us, um, shout out again to Benny and Matt for the Favela project in, in Unreal, and generally thanks to all the urban guys for man uh, hosting me, and thanks to my colleagues, and Esri, over there, <laughs> that's me. Are there any questions maybe at this point? Um, hey, Dick. <laughs> uh, awesome talk. Um, one, when you explained the plugin in Houdini, you once dropped the expression reports. You mentioned yes. reports. Is yeah. it CJ reports? CJ or reports. Is it, yes. Is it Houdini tech? No, it's CJ reports. Yes. Is it from Dilif those in Houdini? Yeah, they are not. They are all all exported as um, properties to the each polygon. So each each building or each part of each building has probably a different report value, but you can all carry those on the polygons, and then at the end you can just do stats on the polygons and find out how many buildings you have by counting the individual IDs you found. Crazy. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh. Amazing. Very nice. It's still alive, I just learned today. <laughs> so somebody is actually working on that. I'm super happy that um, um, the people that took that and, and, re and re revived it again. Um, yeah, unfortunately, we had, to, we had to drop this back then because we simply lack to the human power to maintain all these things. So it was a bit sad, but so um, it, I hear it was not that difficult to get it working again. So. And um, and we basically, of course, still fully support Unity. Just uh, currently, we, we are focusing on FBX. Uh, we recently learned that Autodesk has again decided to push FBX. I guess also because of the Unity Unity guys and and their success. So we definitely have a lot of FBX work ahead of us. You know, modernizing the FBX exporter and so. But. Um, and now with the Houdini, with the, with the Houdini engine, that's at least one way to go also into Unity directly. I didn't try this yet, so cannot guarantee any success at this point. But I'm really happy to to hear about experiments on that part. Okay, thanks, guys.